Hey, it's Andy. Have you started using Notion databases yet? Well, if so, you may have seen this thing called Board View, but how do you use it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over five easy ways that you can use Notion boards, including a neat little trick to add information to cards, and also how to quickly go and process new cards. If you've got any questions, then do drop them down into the comments below. But other than that, let's get into it. So the first way we're gonna look at using Notion boards is in a Kanban style. And this is where you track cards, pieces of work through a certain process. So I'm currently here in my SOP hub, so standard operating procedures. And what I've got, if I scroll down, is we've got this life cycle here. So as SOPs are created, they go through various steps. So we can see here that we've got uh, not started. So this is a piece of work that we need to do, but we've not actually started uh, drafting it yet. We then go and take it into draft as we're writing it. It then needs to be signed off. It's then signed off by somebody else, and then it becomes active. So if I just jump quickly into one of these cards, we can see that we've got here a status field and under here we've got various options. So inbox our ideas and then we've got backlog not started and then we just move it through these various steps. So in board view, you can actually select which of these options, these columns you see. So if I go to the three dots and then here we've got layout, so I'm gonna to go to board, and then underneath we've got group by. So this is group by status and underneath here we've got various columns so i've hidden or i'm not showing the inbox backlog and archived so you can select how they're sorted so whether it's ascending or you can choose in here manual etc and you can also go and hide any empty columns so if i select that one you can see that signed off disappears because there's nothing in it now i want to be able to drag things into these columns as they move through these various stages of the process though i don't want that selected um you can also go and color the columns just to give a little bit of a, a look but i normally leave that off and let me show you how this works. So let's just say that we've gone and drafted um, Instructor Solicitor SOP. Then what we need to do is it needs to be signed off. So all I would do is drag it into this column and we can track things as they go uh, through this process. And you can use, use this for loads of different things. This could be um, properties that are going through the various stages of purchase. It could be bugs, software bugs. So it could be identified in, in development, testing, ready for deployment, and then in production. So there are loads of different ideas, but it's just think of anything that you do on on a regular basis which goes through these steps and then board view is a good way to go and track them the second way to use board view in notion is just to group various cards together by a certain field so i'm currently here in my estate agent connect pro uh, template and this is for um, tracking estate agents so we can see that we've got a contact section here we've just got various test uh, estate agents now i may want to group these by the estate agent company that they work for so if i go to this different uh, linked view here and i click on it we can then see that across the top we've got these different test estate agencies and then underneath we've got the details of the people who work for them so it's just a way of grouping your various cards by a certain type of information so you can use this in lots of different ways for example you may have a list of all of your employees so they could be grouped by the department that they work for maybe you've just got a list of all the books that you're currently reading and they could be grouped by author or by genre or maybe you manage properties and you've got a load of tenants and you could group those tenants per the property that they live in. There are loads of different options, so go and have a play uh, and see what works best for you and however you use Notion. The third way to use Notion's board view is to quickly add information to cards and then you can go and process them by just dragging and dropping. So let me show you how this works. So I'm back in my SOP hub here. So let me just imagine that we go and add a new SOP. So this is a quick idea and all we're going to do is just say um, how to pay staff. So that was just, we're in the middle of something. We quickly thought we need to have an SOP. So we've just chucked an idea in and that goes into our SOP inbox. So the next thing we need to do at a later date is go and process the inbox. So if I just go over here to create, you can see that we've got the inbox and then we've got a, an inbox section here and we've got how to pay staff that we've just created. And then we've got some various statuses here. For example, we may want to go and put something into the backlog. So we don't want to deal with that straight away. We want to keep the idea, but it's not something we want to deal with immediately. Maybe you think, yeah, we need to write this SOP. So we'll put that into not started. So it needs to be done, but we just haven't got into it yet. We could say straight away, right, I need to really crack on with this. So put it straight into the dra into draft and you can start writing it. Or maybe you think about the idea, actually, it's not relevant. It was a good idea at the time, but no longer necessary. So you can put it into archive. So that's the first thing. But you can also go and add in a couple of details uh, within uh, this view. So if I hover over our how to pay staff, you can see here that we've got the little pencil, which is edit. So if I cl just click on this one, it brings up just a couple of things that we could add uh, information for. So firstly, how to pay staff. So that's uh, which department does that correspond to? So if I just click onto that one, that's gonna be finance. So I can select that. 
And then who owns it? Now within SOP, somebody is responsible for writing them, for keeping tabs on them, making sure they're reviewed. So that's the owner. So let me in this case, just put my own name in and then click off. So we've got our how to pay the staff. We've added in a couple of details and now we can think, what do we want to do with this uh, to move it out of the inbox? So let's say it's quite important. Let's just go and drag it into not started. So I want to do it, but um, I can't start it now. I've not got enough time. So I just drag it over and you'll see that it disappears. And that's because we don't want to have a list of everything that's in all of these columns. So under filter, all the filter shows us is the inbox. So all I want to look at are the cards in inbox, but in this view, as I showed you in example one, under board and then under the columns. So here we've got status. I still want to see these columns, but I don't want to see what's in them. All right. And that's why it's important that we don't have the hide empty groups, because if I select that, they all disappear and it's not as easy to use. So let me show those again. Let me show you how to quickly do these. So let's say tracking um, tracking our project expenses. Yeah, that's nice to have. We'll do that later. I'll put that into the backlog. Uh, quarterly performance review. Uh, let's say that that's in draft. So I'm going to start that straight away. Uh, investor onboarding. So as you can see, this is just a really easy way just to quickly go through, process our inbox. It's now down to zero. And then we've got the various SOPs in their different statuses, depending on what we want to do with them. And you could do this with tasks. So you could have a task database where you have your inbox and you quickly process them. Projects, notes. I really recommend throughout your Notion workspace, you think about having an inbox section where you quickly capture ideas and then you have a process where you go and deal with them on a regular basis. For the fourth example, we're going to look at allocating work to our team members. So for example, imagine that in your business you had certain tasks or tickets that had come up and you needed to go and divvy those out amongst your team. Well, you can use board view to look at what currently doesn't have an owner and then you can go and assign it uh, based on their uh, workload. So let me give you an example. So what we've got here is this is board view. Again, this is our SOPs. So I've grouped it by the various owners in the business and I've ensured that I've filtered just so what's got no owner. So if I go into filter at the top, uh, I've got the status needs to be either inbox backlog or not started, and then the owner needs to be empty. So although I can see all of the owners here, we're only seeing the cards where the owner is blank. And again, in a similar way to the last example, we need to just drag these onto the various um, owners. So let's say the tracking project refurb expenses, that's going to be owned by Marge. I literally just drag it across and it will disappear because I'm only filtering where the owner is empty. Um, again, we can go and drag these. So let's say I'm going to cover that one and then review new properties online. That's going to be covered by um, Feline. But again, it's just a really easy drag and drop way for you to go and process various cards, pieces of work, lines in your database, uh, depending on the different parameters that you want to within board view. The fifth way that I'm going to show you how to use board view is actually using a little function where you can go and assess the various cards in the columns when using boards. So so here I've created a little example deal pipeline. So I've got various houses um, at different stages that are going through um, my purchasing process. So some of them are just leads, some of them are actual deals. I've got some values, assignees, when I want them to complete um, and also whether I've signed off the deal analysis, etc. So if I scroll up, I've got a, a pipeline here of my different deals and their status. So the houses that are not started, some of them are leads, so I'm just looking into them at the moment. Some of them are opportunities where I've started to negotiate with the landlord. Some of them have come off and then some are completed. And you'll see for each of the columns, we've got these little numbers next to the uh, column headers. And here you can do a whole host of operations on the cards that are in those columns. So for example, if I click this too, the first thing is we can just count how many items are in each of the columns. So we could count all of them. We could count the values based on uh, various bits of information. We could count the number that have got an empty field. So if you wanted to make sure that all of your cards have got all the information, you could count the empty or not empty. So let me just give you an example here. We can just go count values within, let's just say the deal value. Now each of these has got a, a number in it. So we've come up with two. If I just go into the 225, let's just go and clear that number. You can now see that it's just listing one. So although there are two cards in this column, house three hasn't got an associated value. And so it's only showing one in the count. So let me just go and undo that. And you can see that it's gone back to two. We can also go and do percentages rather than counting. So we could count the number where the deal value is empty. So if I again do that, both have got numbers. So 0% is empty. But let me again go and take out that 225. And you can see that 50% 
has now got a percentage uh, value empty in deal value. So I think that's really useful is so we can actually just go and sum. So if you wanted to go and sum all of the value of deals in the various stages of your pipeline, let me just click on deal value. And you can see that now we've got 225 plus 100, which is 325. So you can quickly at a glance see what the value of your pipeline is at each of these various stages. So that can be really, really useful. We can also do some work on dates. So what's the earliest date you're expecting things to come off? So this one's expecting in a day's time tomorrow. So that's the earliest date. Or we may want to look at the latest date. So I go target date and then that's the 8th of March. We've also got here a checkbox within the signed off. So we may want to see, well, how many of these are actually signed off within the opportunity column? So I can go here, checked, signed off. And I can see that neither of these are signed off. So that may be an issue. And I may want to go, so we've got house three. If I go to house three here and then go and check it off in the uh, database, you can see that's now changed. And then if I go to house five, again, let's go and say that's signed off. And we've now got two because both are signed off. So there are loads and loads of different functions, percentages, dates, ranges, mins and maxes, averages, etc. So go and have a look at various options. Go and have a play with your databases and see if there's any additional added value that you can bring to your board view when using Notion databases. So those are just five examples of how to use boards within Notion databases. I hope you found it useful. And if you've got any questions, do drop them down into the comments below. I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a like. It does really help with the YouTube algorithm. And I've got loads more videos coming up with Notion. So do make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you want to know more about using Notion, then check out this playlist here. But other than that, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.